Welcome to today's D5 Render Tutorial. In this lesson, we'll learn about light sources and how to use them in D5. We'll continue using this 3DS Max model, but first, let's take a look at the four types of lights. Point lights. They work just like the sun, emitting light in all directions. You can add them to the scene by pressing the shortcut key, 1, or you can find them by using add lights. Click on it and you'll see all the axes, X, Y, and Z surrounding the light. Click and hold one of the arrows and drag the light source in that direction to move it along the X, Y, or Z axis. In D5, you can press V to toggle between the scale tool and the move and rotate tool. You can use the scale tool to scale things up or down. Hold shift and drag along the axis to copy the model or light source in the direction of the arrow. Or you can select the object, then press Ctrl D to copy it. To copy multiple objects, hold Ctrl and use the left mouse to select all the objects you need. If you want to group these objects, press Ctrl G and a group will be created in the object list. Press Ctrl Shift G to ungroup them. Click and drag the square in between to move the light freely in the scene. That should help you correctly place light sources, so let's look at the light parameters. They're here on the right sidebar. Here is where you can adjust the intensity and attenuation radius of the lights. These parameters have a default maximum value, but if they are not high enough for you, you can enter a higher one. Attenuation radius controls how far the light spreads out and only objects within this range will be illuminated. You can also enter a value higher than the default one for the attenuation radius. The light source radius affects the softness of shadow edges or fall off. The larger the value, the softer the edges will be and vice versa. It has a maximum value of 10 and does not support entering a higher one. Visible in reflection, controls whether or not the light source appears in material reflections. Turn it off and there will be no reflection of the light source. You can also use the slider to adjust this more precisely. You can also adjust the color of lights. With temperature, you can set the color of the light just like what you would do in real life. Another method is to freely adjust the color of light sources by setting the RGB, HSV, or hex values. Next are spotlights. Many of the parameters are the same as for point lights, so I'll skip the ones mentioned before. Applying IES files. An IES file is an industry standard data file that describes the distribution of the light data measured in the real world. You can use any of the six built-in IES files in D5 or click Customize IES to add an IES file of your own. The cone angle is also adjustable. It controls the cone angle of the light coming from the spotlight. D5 also has strip lights and rectangular lights. They are both in fact rectangular lights. The only difference is with their initial parameters. A strip light is a rectangular light with a large initial aspect ratio and a specified barn door length. A rectangular light is a planar light with an equal initial length and width, and a barn door length of zero. The difference between both light sources lies in the values of the barn door parameters, which can be adjusted with the slider. The barn door angle is the angle between the imaginary barn door plate and the direction of the light's normal with values, ranging from zero to 90 degrees with a relatively small barn door angle, and a greater barn door length you can see that the rectangular light looks a lot like the kind of light used in a photography studio. Give these a try yourself. We've covered all the types of light sources available in D5. Now I'll show you how to create the lights. If it's a daytime scene you're wanting to create, artificial lights will often be used as supplementary lighting. You can add a rectangular light for each window and scale it up or down. I tend to make it a little larger than the window and have it maintain some distance from the window. Next is setting the light's color. You can refer to the parameters I'm using here. When all your lights are in place, group the supplementary lights for each window. Let's say we have four windows on four walls in this room, then there will be four groups of lights in the object list. This is so we can adjust the lighting for each window separately. Using this method, we can get the correct balance between the light and shade in the scene. If we decide to have a light directly on this face, then the lighting should be brighter here. Also, let the sun shine through this window so the natural light can have a photorealistic effect. To emphasize the desk in the scene, we can add a spotlight. 
Please note that since it's a daytime scene, we don't want the spotlight too prominently displayed, which means it's better to avoid too much intensity. Now, let's try to see what's still missing. As you can see, there are many glasses and metal materials in the scene. In order to add highlights, we can place several spotlights around them. Set the attenuation radius and intensity parameters lower, because only a little bit of highlights go a long way. Okay, that's it for today's video. Now that we've gone through all the lighting in D5 Render, you should experiment with your own scene and create and adjust the lights for yourself. By the way, D5 Widget now has included a stage light and projector, so definitely check them out as well. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next lesson.